guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about five ways that you can improve your modern languages. So I used to study French. I done it at National 5 and higher level and I got an A in both of them but I also got the academic prize for higher French for, at my school and I got 77 out of 100, round about there. And I'm just going to show you my five ways that I liked to improve my modern languages. So I used to study French and I study Spanish just now and the way I use to improve my languages are just five little simple things. The first one is if you have a speaking assessment get your teacher to record whatever it is you're saying because I know for National 5 and higher you have the presentation which is literally which is literally about half a page three quarters of a page well round about half a page to three quarters of a page for national five and about a full page for higher or at least mine was now the presentation you don't get any prompts for that and you get the discussion and that's where your teacher asks you questions in that language and you have to reply to them and the way I prepared for this was I got my teacher to record the things that I was saying. Now this not only helps with the pronunciation but it also helps with the memorisation because when you listen to something non-stop, think of it as when you listen to your favourite song. You don't set out to memorise the lyrics but you do simply because you've been listening to it so much. So say, and also with the pronunciation, if you're reading the written copy of it and you don't know how to say one word, I don't know. Let's just take ye bar, ye bar in Spanish, for example. It's spelt double L-E-V-A-R. So you would think it would be like levar or something. But double L's come up as a kind of Y sound. And V's can come up as like a B sound. So that's how you get ye bar instead of levar. Now you wouldn't know that if you were just looking at it. So that can really help with your pronunciation as well. And that's how the pronunciation bit comes in. And then also I've already described the memorisation part. So then the next one, I mentioned this in my top ways to revise tips and these are index cards or flash cards or study cards whatever you want to call them and now what I would do is I would write a word or a phrase on one side and then I would get the other side to be the English translation of it and that's really helpful a if you're just trying to learn them and b if you want to test yourself on them because you can always get somebody else to do it maybe your friend or your I don't know, someone to like look at it and be like, right, okay, here's the English translation, give me it in French or Spanish or Italian or whatever it is you study. And then that will be that. And if you get it right, well done you. But if you get it wrong or you miss out a word or two, like, I don't know, maybe instead of saying lo que mas me gusto, you said lo mas me gusto and you forgot the K, like the Q-U-E. That's not very good and you want to make sure that you get it word for word, particularly with phrases like lo que mas me gusto, lo que menos me gusto. So those are my tips for that. Sticky notes were also a good one. I know I did this for National 5 French for the 2016 SQA exam. I haven't done it since, unfortunately, but what I did was I spent a good several hours writing out some key words and key phrases and I stuck them on one single door of my wardrobe and every day when I was getting dressed I would just look at it when I was opening my door get dressed and then when I closed it again I would take another little look at it and that's good because then that kind of goes into your head subconsciously because you're not setting out and saying, right, okay, for the next two hours, I'm going to be learning such and such. You're just looking at it every day for maybe, I don't know, it depends on how long you would take to get dressed. Say 15 minutes to half an hour for talking sake. 
So those 15 minutes to half an hour of just looking at those phrases can really help you. And the next one I have, now this is my personal favourite. This again comes back to your pronunciation. But it's to listen, no, look, to listen to songs or watch films in your target language. So I am really partial to listening to Disney songs in French and Spanish. To me, it sounds better in French than in English or Spanish, but that's just my personal preference. Um, the Disney songs, it's great, A, if you are a Disney addict and you know most of the song, most of their songs in English, it means that you can get the French translations or the Spanish translations or whatever translation. Obviously, it won't be a direct translation, simply because it needs to fit into the needs to fit into the song properly but that will help with your pronunciation like I don't know say this is going to sound really stupid but say you're pronouncing bonjour as bonjour it's not jour it's jour so bonjour or bonsoir or hola como esta you know that kind of thing obviously that might not necessarily necessarily be in a Disney song, but they can really just help with your pronunciation, even if you don't know what it means. I mean, you might get an idea, or you could always go into YouTube and just type Spanish Disney songs with English subtitles. Maybe that could help you as well. So that's another one to think of. And that could also help with your translation skills as well. Just a wee shout to that. And my last one is to rewrite everything. Now I know that'll sound really boring and really tedious but honestly I cannot stress this enough. I'm learning my directed writing stuff for my Spanish exam just now and I have small little paragraphs or only about four or five lines and all you do is you rewrite them and rewrite them and rewrite them and once you feel comfortable with know how you know it and you want to test yourself on it you cover it up and rewrite what you can. And then once you've done that, go back in with another coloured pen. I personally prefer a red pen because it makes me feel really professional. <laughs> That's quite sad, but I do. So like I'll, I'll use any other, co I'll write any colour pen and then I'll go in with another coloured pen, which is always my red pen because I love my red pen. And I'll just go in and look and see what I've missed. Now, if I've missed a sentence, I'll do like a little star or, we, or an asterisk. And I'll just put it down to the bottom what I didn't write. But if it's something stupid, like I put the accent in the wrong place, then I'll cross out the wrong accent and I can write in the proper accent. And I found that really, really helpful all the time. So those are my five tips for studying modern languages. If you have any tips that I haven't mentioned, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in another video.